What's going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Hope y'all are having a wonderful and amazing day today. It's been a while. What's going on? I've been out for a while. I haven't, I haven't really felt like, uh, I haven't really felt like streaming. I haven't really felt like playing a lot of games lately. I've just been kind of, uh, one of those things. Let me actually turn over here to the right camera here. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, it just, it just hasn't been one of those things. I just, I just, I just haven't had the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the motivation lately, the inspiration to, uh, to do a lot of stuff. And, uh, I don't know, I don't know why, I guess I just got, got burnt out on a lot of things. So, um, and I was taking on a lot of stuff at one time. So, um, Still doing a little bit, still doing a little bit, but not nearly as much as I was. But, uh, the old lady is out of town, uh, for the majority of this week. So, um, I figured, you know, hey, why not? I'll, I'll throw a stream up. I just put my kids to bed, so I was like, you know what, why not? So, um, I've made some upgrades, if y'all, if y'all can't tell, I've got the mic back. Uh, no longer using the headset anymore. Um, went ahead. I ordered a new mic. Got a new webcam. Uh, I got a C9, C922 Pro. Um, so, yeah. Really digging that webcam. It looks... It just makes all of this sexiness look so much better. <laughs> so. Um, what I'm going to be doing is... Well, let's, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Um, the past few months I've been watching, um, I got, I got a buddy of mine sent me, uh, some information or a, uh, a YouTube link for Critical Role on YouTube. And if you don't know what Critical Role is, it's a, uh, uh, a bunch of voice actors to get together and play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you know, pen and paper, you know, not like video game style, like old school book rules like this. And, um, pen and paper. And, yeah, I was like, you know, okay, this is, this is kind of cool. You know, I'll watch a couple episodes. And, uh, so I watched a couple episodes. And then, um, I watched a couple more episodes. And now, now these, these episodes are, you know, this isn't like a, a, a typical YouTube video. You know, it's not like a 30 minute episode on YouTube. No, these are like four and five hour episodes. Um, so, you know, I, I watched a few episodes and I watched a few more episodes and now I think I'm currently on like episode 80, 81, something like that. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I kind of got, I got hooked. Um, I used to, I, I played, um, I've played a couple of RPGs before, uh, played Vampire the Masquerade, you know, way back in like 2001, whenever I first joined the Air Force, um, you know, I was in, uh, I was in AIT, I was going to school, you know, learning my job for the Air Force, and, uh, there's really nothing else to do, you know, I mean, the biggest thing at that time was, you know, the, the PS2 came out, uh, which, you know, don't get me wrong, I played my fair share of. But, um, you know, but we never really got into it. Um, but uh, something about this time, uh, it, it's kind of, I kind of got hooked into it. So I've been doing a lot of things. I've started a D and D group, um, with, uh, a buddy of mine, um, a couple other people that are somewhat local to where I am. They're in like within the next couple of towns over. My buddies, he's further away, but uh, we're doing it all online. And um, I think starting this week, we play it on Wednesday. So that's, what is today? Is today Monday? I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, today's Monday. So on Wednesday, we'll be playing um, at around this time-ish. Um, so I'm thinking about streaming it then. 
Um, I've already talked to all the players and the GM or the DM that we've got. Um, so we think that, you know, everybody's cool with it. They're on board. Uh, nobody's got a problem or anything else like that. So, I mean, I'm sure that there'll be some technical, uh, so technical issues to work out, but we'll get those, those figured out and everything else. So, um, I've already got my character for that campaign. We actually started last week. I tried to record it, uh, to put it up on YouTube, uh, but it didn't pick up all the audio. So going to give it another try again this week. There are some other things that we needed to fix. I've got a, uh, I've actually got a, a, a logo thing for, you know, like up in the up there. Uh, I've got a banner and everything else for it that I made the other day. So quite a bit of stuff that I've got going on that I think I'm actually going to get back into streaming. But I don't, I don't know if I'm going to stream video games. Uh, I probably will stream some still. Some video games still. Um, but I've really been into the whole D&D thing lately. So... Coming up this Saturday uh, is when the local D&D Adventurers League, is, which is like, you know, uh, a structured game, you know, everything that like one of the game local game stores put on. That's where they get together. And I wanted to put start putting another character together. I mean, I still have to go there and make the character and everything else, but I want to go ahead and get everything done. Um beforehand so that's what we're gonna do today is we are going to make a D, &D character i'm kind of out of breath i haven't done this in a while uh okay so let's see if i can remember how to strum there we go let's uh shrink me down over here and what i'm gonna be using is MPMB's uh, D and D sheets, um, which you can go. Uh, it's on In World. Uh, if y'all are interested, I'll post these two links in my Discord. Uh, um, let's make. No, cancel. Create channel. D and D info. There we go. Let's move this. Uh, there we go. Right there. Boom. All right. So we'll paste that in there. This is going to be this is going to be the character sheet, and then I also need the external imports for the character sheet and i'll go over all of this here in just a minute i'm just gonna get these links up there we go and then yeah that'll work all right so those are up All right, let's see here. All right. So, here's what we're going to do. Those two links are now posted in my Discord. If you're if you're not on my Discord, exclamation point Discord should bring you. Let's see if my bot's still working. Yo, what's up, Air Boss? How you doing? There we go. I don't know why. Oh, there's a bit on the uh, on the timer. It popped up. What's up, man? How you been? It's been a while. It's been a while. Um. So yeah. So this is what I'm gonna be using. I've already got this downloaded, so I'm not gonna download it again. But uh, this is the MPMB's uh, D and D five uh, E character tools. So it's more purple, more better. Uh, and the one of these that I'm using when you go to this link and bring you to this page. I am using the printer friendly redesign. That's going to be the PDF file that I, you will need Adobe Acrobat for this. Um, otherwise it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to get all of the, the scripts and everything else into the character sheet. 
So, uh, you want to click on, where'd it go? Uh, character record sheet. And you can click here and get it. Okay. Oh, did he make this for patrons only now? If he did, that's something that's just recently because I was able to download it. Um, tell you what I'll do. Character sheets, master sheets. Um, bloop. Upload. There we go. Now that download is in the in the Discord as well. So that's there. Um, so yeah, so you're gonna need that file, and then you're also gonna want to go over here to GitHub. To this is uh, Safety Orange's GitHub, and just click on clone or download here. You're gonna want this whole thing. Just download the whole zip. Um, these are the two things that you're going to want to need. This is the character sheet I use. It's absolutely freaking amazing. Um, if you have a slower computer, sometimes it bogs down, but, um, if you just let it go and just walk away for like 10, 15 minutes and then come back, it'll have all processed and everything else. So highly recommend this. It will save you so much time, even with to like waiting 10, 15 minutes. It's better than, you know, having to flip through. A book to do everything uh, it's awesome it's awesome so let's go ahead and we'll get started on this uh, when you get everything this is what I've got here um, this is just my my d, &D folder um, character sheets this is where everything's at this is two of my care well one of my characters and one of my buddy's characters um, but master sheets, this is everything that you're going to get when you download those files. You're going to get this zip file and this zip file here. Just extract them here. Um, that's all you need to do. And then just open up the printer friendly redesign. And let me move this out of the way because I don't need that anymore. Um, yeah, I know. That's going to pop up a thing. It's going to say, okay, urgh, I need you to move. Cancel. I'm going to have to reopen this. Okay, so we're going to put that there. No. Let's see if it actually opened. There we go. That way y'all can see exactly what happens. I, I had it up on another screen for whenever I was playing the other night. Okay, so this is what's going to pop up whenever you first open up that printer-friendly redesign page. Um... This basically is going through telling you that the only thing that's in this spreadsheet by default is what's in the SRD because Wizards of the Coast are like, and you can't really blame them. I mean, it's their copyrighted material, but they're really anal about who has, who is distributing their content. Uh, they want you to buy from them, which, you know, it's understandable, especially whenever it's something like this, you know, a single PDF renders a book completely useless. Um... So, so yeah, I mean, not to say that I don't have, um, some PDFs that may have fallen off a truck. I mean, but, um, I'm still, you know, as you can tell, still getting the books. Um, but anyway, you can click here. Don't show this message again. Just tell it. Okay. And then you're going to get this right here. Um, and what you're going to want to do here is you're just going to hit the, this get more button right in the middle and you're going to import a file with additional material and then click add file and you're going to want to go back to where you uh, extracted all those those files and everything else and then you just go into the imports for uh, MPME's character sheet. Who is sending me messages? 
mix a bra. Um, all right. All right, so um, you're gonna want to go into the imports, go into the WOTC material, and just this very. You don't have to worry about all these other ones. Um, it would probably be faster if you do exactly what you were gonna pick and everything else, and you just wanted this very specific thing. Um, but I'm lazy, so I just tell it to do all WOTC pub plus UA, which is your all uh, Wizards of the Coast publications plus the Unearthed Arcanas. Um, so we're just going to select that one and we're going to hit apply changes, tell it. Okay. And then we're just going to take, uh, do we want the unearthed arcana stuff in there? Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Why not take all of that and add it over. So you're just, so this is what wasn't included now it's all over here which is what is included and then you just hit apply and wait and basically what this is doing is this is populating this pdf with a bunch of drop downs and everything else um all right so that's done so let's make this big um all right so we're ready to go and this all works off of javascript so you've got this little javascript floating window up here that you can just you can actually move it completely to another area what's up shoe dog is it still working oh i'm not actually getting the it does not doing the just not doing the thing you broke it shoe you broke it you tired where are you at man are you out gallivanting across the countryside still But, hey, what's up, Midnight? How you doing? You just spent 120 days moving around. Oh, how did your place turn out? You sent me uh, the one picture. You'll have, you'll have to send me some, some pics of uh, of the stuff that's uh, that's done. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing that. You'll have to post some pics. But, all right, so... Here we go. To make our, our, our character, uh, we're going to start off. Um, we'll just click right over here and this big uh, thing right here. It's going to pop up a window for you. Uh, you're going to take one level. And then right here in this drop down, you're going to pick your class. Uh, I've been kind of debating. I don't know. Made a custom L-shaped corner desk. N nice. I like, I love my corner desk, dude. I love mine. Um, to be honest with you, I'd like, I think I'd like to have a U-shaped desk that, that goes down on both sides. I think that'd be awesome. Nice, Midnight. Nice. This actually might help you out if you haven't used this, uh, this character sheet before. I just got into it myself, so. But I've, I mean, I've done like tons and tons. I don't do anything without doing a shit ton of research. So, yeah, I've actually just started a. Uh, I actually just started a group uh, myself. So, but all right. So you're gonna pick your your class here. Um, I want to. I want. I want some kind of. Okay, shoot. Uh, I want to. I want a an arcane class. I want a caster class. I don't know. I haven't quite decided if I want to do wizard or sorcerer, though. Uh, I think I'm leaning more towards wizard. You've been using DD Beyond since the DM owns all the books. Um, yeah, that worked. Now, can the DM share his books with you? On D&D Beyond, where you can actually use the, those resources? I don't, I, don't, I don't know how that works. I've used D&D Beyond. Um, but I found this is a billion times better. 
Um, I really think that I'm going to go with Wizard. Um, he shares them with everyone in his camp. Oh, he just gives you, what, his login or something? For, for the character sheets? Ooh, there's a bunch of different schools. Uh, I, I don't know what these schools are. Um, let's look up the wizard. Your office is nice. The master suite's amazing. Seating area, custom boot shelf. Nice, dude. Nice. Oh, the campaign thing. Uh, oh, okay. It does allow him to share the books. Nice. See, I don't. I didn't have that. Um, this is what is this? The bar. This is the hermit outlander. Oh, that's equipment. Um, those are backgrounds. Here we go. The wizard. Um, ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. All right, here we go. Here's the schools. Schools from abjuration. Blocks, banishes, or protects. No, I don't want that. Oh, you got to go back to work tomorrow? That sucks, dude. Yeah, Midnight, this is... Uh, wait until you see what it does. Wait until you see, like, what this thing can do. Um... Conjuring building clouds, killing fog, or summon creatures. Okay. Conjuration doesn't look bad. Divination. There's a divinary strive. Uh, remote viewing, spear and eye, foresight, enchantment. Okay, so those. Okay. Evocation. Powerful element or ele effects such as bitter culture. Oh, here we go. This looks like uh, like what I'm looking for. The school of evocation. Your focus, your studies on magic that creates powerful elements, effects such as bitter cold, searing flame, rolling thunder, crackling lightning, and burning acid. Uh, okay, evocation doesn't look bad. I don't really want to do illusion. Necromancy. That could be fun. Yeah, yeah, Shu, I don't want to hear it, man. You you have, like, a dream job for me. <laughs> um, sap the life force from creatures. Transmutation. Ooh, transmutation may not be bad. Magic gives you the tools... To become a smith on a on reality's forge. The tinkers are pretty sure turning people into toads. So da, 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 da. Uh, I could play around with a little bit of alchemy with that. That could be fun. You could transform up to one cubic foot of material. Oh, iron, copper, or silver. Interesting. That's not bad. The school that lets him recover spell slots? That would be interesting. Um, now, see, this is just the ones from the player's handbook that I've got here. Let's look at... Um, okay, so it's either transmutation or evocation. Where is my... Give me my interwebs. All right, so let's do 5E wizard schools. Um, there we go. The Giant in the Playground, this is an awesome forum right here that I found a lot of stuff. Awesome, they got several, uh, they just got the basic things here too. Um, 
Have they not pulled anything in? They haven't. Okay, let's look at source books. Um, let's pull up Xanathar's Guide. Uh, let's cancel you for now. There we go. Xanathar's Guide. Um, let's go. Can I get the table of contents, please? Uh, -da 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 -da. Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Sorcerer, Wizard. Page 58. Uh, it's all in 29. 53. 4. 55. 56. 57. 58. Wizard. All right. Um. Okay, you got the spell book. Uh, different ambitions, eccentricity, eccentricity. Uh, war magic. A variety of arcane colleges specialized in training wizards for war. Um, the tradition of war magic blends principles of evocation and abjuration. Hmm. So it's offensive and defensive, They're known as war mages. See, magic is both a weapon and armor. Using their spells, see tactical controls. If they... When their opponents attempt to counterattack. Uh, yeah, this does sound kind of interesting. That guy looks like a tool, but. <coughs> Uh, Arcane deflection, tactical whip, power surge, durable magic. Uh, at second level, so it starts off early. You've learned to weave your magic to fortify yourself against harm when you're hit by an attack or you fail a saving throw. You can use a reaction to gain a plus two bonus to your AC against that attack or a plus four bonus to that saving throw. Wow, that's that's impressive. Um, when you use this feature, you can't cast spells or other than cantrips until the end of your next turn. Okay, so there's the drawback. So you can bolster your AC or your saving throw, but your next attack, you can only cast a cantrip. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Give yourself a bonus to your initiative rolls equal to your intelligence. Ooh, that's big. Your 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 uh, initiative roll goes up the same by your uh, intelligence modifier instead of your dex. Uh, store magical energy. It's power surge. You can store a maximum number of power surges equal to your intelligence modifier. When you finish a long rest, your number of power surges resets to one. Resetting the spell with the spell magic or counter spell. Gain one power surge. If you end a short rest with no power surges, you gain that one power surge. Okay. While you maintain concentration on a spell, you have plus two bonus to AC and all saving throws. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, tactical wit doesn't say instead of dex. It's adding it on top of... Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're rocking a wizard, you're probably not... I mean, more than likely not going to have a high dex. 
I mean, if you're making any kind of a trying to, to, to make any kind of a hard hitter. Um, let's see so if we drop to wizard. There's war magic. There's that one right there. There's the artificer, which could be a lot of fun. That one looked really good. Tradition of the artificer. Um, let me pull that one up. Uh, cancel. Uh, I don't think it's in. I don't think it's in, no. It wasn't in there. Um, five e tradition of the artificer. Ba, ba, ba. New races shifted to, to, to war for the artificer. I don't know if you can use Dunearth Arcana though in um, League. I don't think you can. So, no, I don't want that. I want here. Wizard. Um. I think for me, it's a toss up. The 10th level, you can get Polymorph. I just don't know how well the School of Transmutation is going to be in actual combat. I mean, it's got lots of, I can think of a ton of uses uh, outside of combat. But I don't think in combat it's going to be near as good. I think you're going to kind of gimp yourself. So, evocation, I think that's where we're gonna go. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with evocation. We'll keep it simple. Straight out of the player's handbook, level one, apply. Let the sheet do its work for a minute. Um, would you like to generate a new spell sheet? Yes, I would. That is where this really shines. Okay. Uh, so we're at level one. So we've got uh, three cantrip stones. So let's choose our cantrips. Um... Are there any healing ones? Uh, my blade ward has to splash, scrape off our dancing my firebolt fiends, or that's friends. Um, light is good, made him mending. No, mending is repairing an object. Uh, poison spray, press the digitation. Definitely want that. Has lots of use. I've, I've, I've thought of lots of ways to use that. Um, let's go with. Poison spray maybe. Uh, blade war. Chill touch. Control flames. Create bonfire. Create bonfire could be fun.
Um, <laughs> Firebolt. We want Firebolt. Uh, Frostbite. Fight Legendary Mage Hand. Minor Illusion Mold. Earth, Poison Spray, Prestige, and Ray Frost, Shape Water. Toll the Dead. What does that one do? See if I can find it. Conditions. Here we go. Spells. Uh, it's not in the player's handbook. Okay. I just need a lot more. Shape water, maybe? Poison spray? Is that in here? Ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, but I don't know what Toll the, Toll the Dead comes from. Let's see. Let's look it up. Uh, 5e Toll the Dead. Uh, target you choose must save on a wisdom, on a wisdom saving throw. If it's missing any hit points, it takes 1d12 necrotic damage. Otherwise, it takes 1d8. Increases by one die when you reach 5th, 11th, and 17th level. Eh. It's a necromancy. It's a necromancy. Uh, what book is it out of, though? That's my question. Uh, it's in Xanthar's. Okay. I could do that. What is this other one? What was this? Uh, poison spray? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Told the dead. Versus. Uh, actually, let's just look up poison spray. That was a, that was a, what, 1d12 was what that one was? So was this one. Uh, but I don't know where it's from. It's a conjuration spell. Here it spells. It says player's handbook, but it ain't there. Oh, wait, yeah, it is. Here it is, right here. Poison spray. Range of 10 feet. Uh, 1d12 damage. Constitution save. Okay, but that's a, that's 10 feet. How much was the last one? That's 60 feet. That's the same thing. Uh, fifth. 11th and 17th yeah the difference between these two is it, I mean it does the same amount of damage it's just this one can go a lot further I think we'll go with that one told the dead sweetness Told the dead. What's the difference between the two? Told dead. Told dead. Alright, so I press the digitation. Firebolt. Um, let's look at Firebolt. Uh, it's 120 feet, is a 1d10. It ignites if it isn't being worn or carried. 5th, 11th, and 17th. Okay. Firebolt. Uh, what was the other one? There was a frost one. Uh, 
frostbite. Frostbite spell is instantaneous, 60 feet. Constitution saving throw, it's 1d6, yeah, it's not even worth it. Has disadvantage on the next weapon attack it rolls before the end of its next turn. Yeah, I don't think that one's even, uh, no, not even worth it. Okay, so we're going to go with Told the Dead and Firebolt and press the digitation. All right, and that's all we've got there. Uh, generate spell sheet. And now we wait. This one shouldn't be too bad. It's not going to have a, a ton of spells. But this is the part that I really like about this spreadsheet. Boom. It gives you this spell sheet here. So it tells you what it is. It gives you a description for it. And, and also telling you, you know, what it is in here that you that you get out of it. Um, spell attack for 1d10 fire damage. Plus 1d10. Uh, bleh, I can't talk. Plus 1d10 at blah, blah, blah. Plus you can hover over it and it gives you like the full uh, thing. Uh, Prestidigitation doesn't do any damage, but Toll the Dead, um, that is a 1d12 necrotic damage. Um, if they fail the Wisdom Saving Throw, if they make the Wisdom Saving Throw, it's a 1d8. Yeah, dude, the, the spell sheets are where it's at for this thing, man. Especially, like, uh, I helped, uh, Chickface's husband make, because he's playing with us, um, make a Cleric. And it took like 10 minutes for it to generate everything. But what it did, it was just like this big list of spells that the clerics got. Uh, and, it, and it had it just like this. It had them all in here. Um, of course, you know, it's got your DC of 10 to start with because we haven't put anything else in or anything yet. So let's go back up to the top. The player's name is going to be Pavilon. The character name is going to be... Have a look. Uh, it's gonna be the name of the mage. The background. Um. Debating if I want to go sage, or if I want to do acolyte. Um. Let's do this. 5e. Sage. What do I get for Sage? Uh, skill proficiencies in Arcana and History. The Arcana would be nice. Uh, I get to pick two languages. And I get uh, some equipment stuff. Um, I could be an Alchemist, Astronomer. So it's got subspecialties. Okay, so that's the sage. Um, there was a archaeologist. Ah, uh, learns about the uh, history and survival checks. Um, photography school, no case, you get a language. Um, Get a map. Does not sound near as good. When you enter a ruin or a dungeon, you can correctly ascertain its original purpose and determine its builders, whether those were dwarf elves, humans, you know, the, the, uh, you can determine the monetary value of art objects more than a century old. Yep, yeah, nope, don't want it that one. Um anthropologist
Wow, there's a lot of these. What is the haunted? Well, let's take a look at that. Well, let's look at the anthropologist first. So I'm curious what that is. Uh, insight, religion, proficiencies, two languages. Yeah. Haunted one. Arcana, investigation, religion, and survival. So you can pick two of those. I'd probably go with Arcana and investigation. Um, you get to choose an exotic language. That's kind of cool. Uh, equipment. Monster Hunter pack and a trinket. Hammer, three wooden stakes, a holy symbol. That's not bad. It's not a bad one. Definitely a contender there. Um, we have Hermit. Ooh, an Investigator. I don't want to be a noble on this character. Uh, let's look at the Investigator. That's not what I want. No, oh, that's City Watch. Investigator. Oh, it's a homebrew. Can't use it. Um. Let's look at <laughs> What's an inheritor? Is that is that a, like a legit one? Okay, so this is a sword coast. Supervision for survival, plus one of Arcana history or religion. Uh, any language. Now, I'm kind of leaning towards. The, either the sage or the haunted one. Um, the haunted one was good. Arcana and history. Two languages. Ah. <sighs> Actually, you know what? Look, okay, there's a sage. Let's do the five E haunted one. See, I like the investigation. And Arcana. Uh, 
Arcana in Investigation or Arcana in History. That's what it pretty much comes down to. Although I like the feature, the researcher feature. You know what? We're going to go with the haunted one. Just because I like the that I get both arcana and investigation proficiencies on top of what I've already got. All right, Shu. Have fun, sir. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Hopefully, I'll be uh, doing some more streams. I know I'll be streaming uh, more than likely Wednesday evening at, a, at around like this time frame. I'll actually be streaming my campaign. Yeah, the Heart of Darkness. Yeah, I could really play into that. Uh, from a from an RP standpoint. Uh, okay, so let's go back here, yeah. and we're gonna go with haunted one. Uh, what language do I want to take? What do I get? Choose one exotic language. Um. Abyssal, Deep Speech, Draconic, Infernal, uh, Sylvan, or Underkind. I think I'll probably go with Draconic just because I think that, that would probably be what I would use more than anything else. I mean, it is Dungeons and Dragons. And a lot of people tend to go to Dragons for big bosses, so. Yeah, I think I'll take Draconic. Draconic language. Okay. And it's going to put everything in. All right. Um, is there a sub? Oh, no. That's my, my race. Um, now, a, a wizard. Let's go back over here. Bobby Wizard. No, that's not what I want. Oh, there's not one. They don't have a... Yeah, it's a... Um... It's a special language. Uh, 5 e you need five was your guide. Here's this one. Uh, apparently, Giant in the Playground doesn't have one. Which sucks. I like their guides. Uh, guides of Wizard Power. Um. Party rolls, blah, 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 out of combat rolls. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> I don't need all this crap. Here we go. Ability scores. Okay. Uh, blue, green, purple. Okay, so definitely want int. And then let's see, what could I possibly multi-class into? Um, con would definitely be good for concentration checks. Wisdom, charisma, and strength that I'll need. So we're going to go with mm, 
can see, yeah. So I want intellect and either, I think I want intellect and con. Um, race selection. Uh, I could do high elf, which is intellect and dex, gnomes. Um, even more intellect. You can get dex or con. So I could be a gnome. Don't need half elf because I don't want the charisma. Plus three int bonus is nice though on the tiefling. Trance is actually. Mm. I don't really want to. I think I'm going to go with the high elf. I think we'll do the high elf. Just has better extra things that I can do. Um, and then, and then, no, come back here. Thank you. Hi, Elf. Uh, I'll get another language from High Elf. Uh, it's faster to look it up. See what languages I get. Uh, 5E High Elf. Uh, common and elvish. Uh, I'm just going to leave it blank and I'll pick it afterwards. Uh, language from High Elf. Okay. Why are you an evoker? Oh, I guess I was, I guess I would be evoker. That's a evocation wizard. I'll change that to wizard evocation. There we go. Uh, and I don't have any experience yet. The background. Gonna be a pretty good linguist? Yeah. Dark arts in the family. That could be fun. Mm. Alright. Um, I'm going to do this based off of point by, so these are going to start with eight and every one. All right. And then I get 27 points. Um, now high elf gives me bonuses. Um, Eh, ability scores. Dex is automatically increased by two. High elf intelligence also increases by one. 
So dex by two, intelligence by one. So dex becomes 10. Uh, intelligence becomes nine. There we go. And now I've got 27 points. Um, now how many points can I put in? I can't remember. Let me point by calculator. Uh, select raced. I am Where's the high elf? Oh, really? This stupid Screw it So oh, there it is high elf There we go So yeah, so it gives me this plus two. Okay, um, I don't need strength Dex, uh, I want my intelligence up as high as it can go. I want my constitution probably up. Oh, my constitution at 12, maybe. Bring my wisdom up more. Uh, charisma, I don't really need. I got five more points. Take two there. Two there. I could drop one more. I uh, can't drop one more in wisdom. We got one point left. Wisdom to 14. I could do that. Oh no, I don't want to go 31. I'm going to go 27. Oh no, wait. No. It has to be twenty seven. Here's you to a fifteen dex. Fifteen, twelve, sixteen, fourteen, ten. I think I want to take. Put you on wisdom. Why not? I mean, one of them is going to be off. So okay, eight, fourteen, twelve. So we eight, 14, 12, 15, 15, 10. 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 10. 14 to 15 is two points, is it? Okay. So that's why I was counting it the way it was. But no, that's not right. What are my, to I was looking at the wrong scores. What are my total scores? 8, 14, 12. Eight, 
8, 14, 12. Sixteen, fifteen, ten. Wait, no, that's it. Twenty-eight. Twenty-six. Uh, I see what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're. I see what you're talking about. The thing is, is, adding one more point into decks does me no. I mean, it's 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 a wasted stat point at this at here. Pixel, what's up? Oh, good lord! I got like. It's playing like four times in my dome right now. What's up, Pixel? How you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna have to fix that. I gotta figure out where the doubles are coming in. One point in strength is 15 pounds carry. Uh, yeah, I could do the one in strength. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta, I gotta take it out of decks. Yeah, I could do that. I mean, I'm still gonna be at a negative one on the ability modifier, but. Can't really stay your babysitting family drama happening. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm planning on streaming again on, on, on Wednesday, Pixel, so. You get to play with the six months old and you love baby. I love them whenever they, they're sleeping. <laughs> They're great with ketchup. That's so wrong. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we'll do with that. Okay, so nine, uh, bleh, over here. Total scores. 9, 14, 12. That's 27 of 27. So we're going to go with 9... 14, 12, and then sixteen, fourteen, ten. Nope, oh, wrong one. Sixteen, fourteen, and ten. There we go. All right. It did make me laugh, Pixel. I hope you have a wonderful evening, though. Thank you for the host. It means a lot. It's been a while since I've been around, so... Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe y'all will get to see this... This lovely face some more. <laughs> Alright, so... All right, so now I need to see what do I have proficiencies in uh, perception. I got perception. How do I already have proficiency in perception? Oh, from the high elf. Okay, so from haunted one, I need to choose two: either arcana. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Was arcana and investigation. Okay, so I want proficiency in arcana and investigation. But up at home. Uh, Man, I was asking for a small Minecraft server to have to talk to the evil troll path. <laughs> uh, I do have a little scrap server up, uh, Pixel. Uh, yeah, we'll get to the. I'll get to the cantrips uh, here shortly, at midnight. Um. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, I was gonna say I know that uh, the Little's Craft server that I've got up is the one that Chicks Chick Faces Littles play on. Running one of my mod packs. Uh, Minecraft. 
Close car right here. It's got quite a bit. It's a one seven ten pack though, not a one. Uh, that's not a. It's not a, a current pack. It's a one seven ten. But yeah, just uh, you know how I get hold of me. Worlds of dragons. You don't know what what is. He says he likes that pack. Yeah, take a look at it. It's on uh, it's on the Twitch launcher. It's called Little's Craft. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, it should be a message. Oh, the pack is called Worlds of Dragons. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, it should be it should be a message on uh, Discord. I'll take a peek. This is funny. This song is very uh, appropriate. <laughs> yeah, you see, if you'll message me when you get time, then I might make the server when I get time. So, next Thanksgiving, maybe? <laughs> All right, have a good night, Pixel. Okay. So, that's done. I picked my other two. Um, oh, and Wizard, I get to choose two more from Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, and Religion. Um, well, I've already got Arcana and Investigation, so Insight would be good. Um, investigation? No, I've already got investigation done. Medicine, religion, or history. Uh, religion, medicine, or history. Uh, <laughs> Or medicine. Let's do religion. Okay, so that should be all of our proficiencies. Alright, sweet. Okay, so that's all done. History can, be, history can be, but I feel that religion gets used more than history does. At least from, like, the games and stuff that I've watched and things like that. History only gets brought in every now and then, where religion gets used a lot more. Okay. So that's done, that's done, that's done. Uh, resistances, I don't have any resistances right now. Um, uh, maximum hit points are automatically going to assume total HP when using fixed values. Boom. I have seven HP. Um, now, for actions. No, I don't want actions. Attacks is going to be... What did I pick? My spell list. Firebolt and Toll of the Dead. Is it not going to show up? Firebolt. Um, apparently the search function is not working. Uh, 
Toll of the Dead. Bloop. See how this just like, it like automatically puts everything in there. It's beautiful. I love it. Ooh, Toll of the Dead is a wisdom cast, not an intelligence cast. Which I'm not that far off, so. I guess that's good to have two different things, maybe. Kind of, sort of, just a little bit, possibly, maybe. Mm. That's fine. So I got Firebolt, which is a straight attack roll, and Toll of the Dead, which is a wisdom save. Okay. Why not? We'll roll with it. Yeah, it might be a mistake, but we'll roll with it anyway. Um. Okay, so I don't have actions or anything right now. Um. Evoker. These are my skills or class features. I cast prepared wizard cantrips and spells using intelligence as my spellcasting ability. Now, does that mean that I could take that and change it to an intelligence? I don't know. Use arcane focus as a spellcasting focus. Cast all wizard spells in my spellbook as rituals if they have the ritual tag. Uh, cast based off of your intellect, but the target has to roll a wisdom save. Okay, so. So technically, I should change that to intellect. Even though it's still a wisdom save. Yeah, that, that raised the DC of the spell. Because, like, see if it, if it was at wisdom. The DC is 12, but if I switch it over to intellect, the DC is 13. Yeah, that makes a difference. Okay. Alright. Oh, so that's done. Oh, this needs some personality traits. Add features, personality traits. I don't run from evil. Evil runs from me. Uh, I don't give a shit about poetry. Uh, don't talk about the thing that torments me. I'd rather not burden others with my curse. I kind of like that one. Now you pick two personality traits, right? Isn't it two personality traits? I think. Oh, that's not an ideal. Uh, what's destruction? I'm a monster that destroys other monsters and anything else that gets in my way. Uh, yeah, I thought there was two personality traits. So I need to pick another one. We'll do that one. Refuse to become a victim and I will not allow others to be victimized. All right, ideals. What sacrifice? Try to help those in need no matter what the cost. I'll stop the spirits that haunt me or die trying. That would that actually works really good with the rest of the story. That's a good one. Cleansing. Nope. That one's not bad either. I have a dark collar that puts me above the law. Ooh. 
I'd like to know my enemy's capabilities and weaknesses before rushing into battle. I don't go two crafts without being a lawful. I don't want to be evil. Um, all right, let's go with desperation. I'll stop the spirit that haunts me or die trying. Um, what Babylon is the law? I thought the law, the, the law was. Uh, keep my thoughts and discoveries in a journal. My journal is my legacy. I would sacrifice my life and my soul to protect the innocent. My torment drove away the person I love. I strive to win back the love I've lost. A terrible guilt consumes me. I hope that I can find redemption through my actions. There is evil in me. I can feel it. It must never be set free. Um... We'll go with a terrible guilt. I, 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 like, a backstory is forming all up in, like, the headspace right now. Um. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Flaw. I have certain rituals that I must follow every day. I can never break them. Uh, soon the worst of people. Feel no compassion for the dead. Have an addiction. Purveyor of doom and gloom. Talk to spirits that no one else can see. I like that. <coughs> I like that. Talk to spirits. That fits in with kind of like what I've got going in my head right now. I like it. I'm going to have to go get something to drink here in a minute. Ah. Uh, Duh. Duh. All right, so Arcane Recovery. Uh, one level of spell slots per long rest. So for each long rest, I'm just confused. Once per day, after a short rest, I can recover a number of fifth level or lower spells. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. Um, okay, my heart of darkness, the high elf, I get the plus two decks and intellect trance, um, the cool thing about being like a full elf, like a high elf or whatever, um, is that trance, like if your party is like out somewhere and you have to have a guard, you can like really help out your party members by letting them still, letting most of them still have a full night's sleep since you only need half of a long rest's worth of sleep. No one cantrip of my choice from the wizard spell list. Um so do I, I get to pick another cantrip? Is that, uh, I had three cantrips, didn't I? Yeah, these three are cantrips. Do I need to pick another cantrip? Another cantrip from the wizard's spell list. Yeah, I get a fourth cantrip. Okay. Uh, sorcerer spells. The wizard spells the cantrips. Acid splash, blade ward, chill touch, dancing lights, firebolt, friends. Light, mage hand, mending message, minor illusion, poison spray, press the digitation, ray of frost. Shocking grasp or true strike. What is ray of frost? Uh, I can just look it up to here. Uh, Ray of Frost. Actually, turn to the right page. How often does that happen? 
Um, it's instant. It's 60 feet. It's vocal and uh, gesture. A frigid beam of blue-white light streaks toward a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target on hit. Takes 1d8 cold damage, and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. Okay. So, I mean, it kind of slows it down a little bit. 10 feet's really not a lot. 1d8's really not a lot. Um, what is Blade Ward? Let's take a look at that. Dun, 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 dun. Biggie's hand. Blade Ward. Blade Ward. Extend. Uh, it's one action. It goes. Uh, it's a melee range on self. So I can only cast it on myself. You extend your hand and trace a, sig a sigil, a sigil of warding in the air uh, until the end of your next turn. You have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. That's not bad so basically I've got melee resistance blade ward wouldn't be horrible especially for the squishy mage um, light does have its uses light does have its uses there's no doubt about that um, I could still go back with the poison spray. Poison is uh is is that could be could be a thing. Oh, and, and oh. oh. Uh poison spray. Uh it's within ten feet. It's an action. Instance, you extend your hand toward a creature you see. Uh, must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. The thing is, is if it fails or if it makes the save, it takes no damage. So that's the bad thing with this one. It's not like where if it makes the save, it gets only half damage. And it does not apply the poison effect. It just does poison damage. Acid Splash. Oh, it's the very first one right here. 60 feet. I like that. Uh, choose one creature within range. Or choose two creatures within range that are within five feet of each other. A target must succeed on a dex saving throw. Or take 1d6 acid damage. Again, if they make the save, they take no damage. I don't like that. Um, what is chill touch? Did I look at that one already? Chill touch. Necromancy cantrip. Uh, 120 feet. I like it. Uh, you create ghostly skeletal hand in the space of a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the creature to assail it with the chill of the grave. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 necrotic damage, so it's on hit. And it can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn. So it can't heal until it's my go again. Uh, if you hit an undead target, it also has disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the end of your next turn. That's not bad. 120 feet's good range. It's a hit, so you just gotta you just gotta make your hit, and it takes 1d8 necrotic damage. And can't heal until the start of your next turn. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, Dancing Lights, I, don't, I think it's just a aesthetic spell. I don't think it has any kind of damage to it. Darkness, 
What the fuck is it? Oh, it's the fuck is it? Yeah, dancing lights. D A N. There it is. 120 feet. Concentration up to one minute. Um. You create up to four torch-sized lights within range, making them appear as torches, lanterns, or glowing orbs that hover in the air for a duration. You can also combine the four lights into one glowing, vaguely humanoid form of medium size. Whichever form you choose, each light sheds dim light in a 10-foot radius. As bonus action on your turn, you can remove the lights up to 60 feet to a new spot within range. A light must be within 20 feet of another light created by this spell. And a light winks out if it exceeds the spell's range. Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, it's it's like a... You can have more of them up, but they're not as powerful. They're not as bright. Mage Hand. I'm just kind of going down the list here. I want to wanna make sure that I... I mean, cantrips, you can cast those all day long. So I want to make sure... If I don't get any of my other spells right, I definitely want to make sure that the cantrips are right. Mass Cure Wounds. I'll take that one. Um, Mage Hand is what I'm looking at. Mage Hand. 30 feet. Um, hand vanishes if it's more than 30 feet away from you. You can control the hand. You can move. Okay, yeah, that's not... It cannot attack, activate magic items, or carry more than 10 pounds. That's, I mean, it could have its uses, but not a lot. Mending. Yeah, it can repair an item, but it cannot restore... Um, magic to an item if it's broken and message it could deal with door traps it could um, if you roll uh, a good enough uh, investigation check to detect if there were traps and with the lower decks although my decks was bumped up a little bit Hmm, message is kind of interesting. That could be a uh, that could be an interesting one to do for utility wise. You point your finger towards a creature within range of whisper a message. The target and only the target hears the message and can reply in a whisper that only you can hear. So if you're having to be like super quiet, you could it's like a telepathic message that you can send them and they can reply back. And nobody else can hear it, so it makes no noise. Huh. Not bad. Minor illusion could be good. No larger than a five foot cube. Hmm. Poison spray. I've already got press to digitation. Ray of Frost, I think we looked at that one and it wasn't that good. Instant 60 feet. On hit, yeah, it's just 1d8 gold damage. Shocking Grasp. One action. Melee range. 
Body springs from your hands to deliver a shock. Make a melee spell attack against the target. You have advantage on the attack roll if the target is wearing armor made of metal. On hit, the target takes 1d8 lightning damage and it can't take reactions until the start of its next turn. Again, it, if it makes the say, No, no, no. It's, just, it's an attack. It can't take reactions until the start of its next turn. So you could rock out with a shocking grasp and then move away without them being able to get an attack of opportunity on you because attack of opportunity is a reaction. That would be good to, you know, if somebody jumps in melee range with you, being able to pop that and then get away. That would actually not be bad. That would not be bad. Um, and then True Strike, if I remember correctly, is just gives you advantage on attack or something like that. On a melee attack. True Strike. Concentration up to one minute. No, that's Tree Strike. Uh, true Strike. Concentration up to one round. You extend your hand and point a finger at the target range. Your magic range, you have brief insight. Into the target's defense on your next turn, you gave advantage on your first attack roll against the target. Provided the spell hasn't ended. So yeah, it just gives you advantage. Which, I mean, I guess could be good in certain situations. It's only up to 30. It's 30 feet cast. I kind of like that shocking grasp. I'm going to go with it. Um, spell. Um, we can always prepare her with a checkbox. Oh, uh, without the first column. I don't need it. It's at will. Uh, all right, here we go. At will. Wizard spell. Cantrip. Holy balls, here's all the things. This is how powerful this character sheet is. It's amazing. Uh, shocking Grass. Oh, there's all these other ones, too. There's Thunderclap, there's Sword Burst. What was Thunderclap? That's just the noise, and then it doesn't push people away. Thunder Wave, I think, is what pushes them away. Yeah. That's Thunder Wave. Kind of like Shocking Grasp. Thunder Clap is AoE damage. Let's take a look at it. I think it's just like an audio, audio damage, isn't it? Okay, let's do 5e. Thunderclap. There's a bard spell. Okay, it's in Xanthar's. Create a thunder of sound which can be heard a hundred feet away. Each creature within range beside you must make a constitution save. On a failed save, the creature takes 1d6 thunder damage. But unfortunately, that also hits your party. Yeah, no, I'm going to stick with what I got. It's a nice little duck and run uh, thing right there. Uh, what is the U? Unearthed Arcana. Uh, I don't know if I can use that. I don't know if I can use this one for our league. Let's take a look. A spell, 
at will, wizard spells, cantrips. Oh, let's look up create bonfire. What is that one? I've looked at that before. That's from Xanathar's. So I can definitely use it. It's a deck save. Five foot cube. 1d8 fire damage. Ignites flammable. You create a bonfire on ground that you can see within range, which is at a 60 foot range. Till the spell ends, magic bonfire fills a five foot cube. Any creature in the bonfire space, when you cast a spell, must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 fire damage. Um, creature must also make the saving throw when it moves into the bonfire space for the first time on a turn or ends its turn there. Ignites flammable objects that aren't being worn or carried. Oh, it's all the dead, isn't it? And isn't it? So you're showing unearthed arcana here. Let's take a look. Xanathar's. Um, control F. Toll the dead. Cancer. It's a cleric spell. Next. Warlock spell. Next. Wizard spell. Next. Here it is. <coughs> yes, it is. It is in here. Awesome. Okay, so... There I go. Um, here. Clear room. Bonfire's not bad. Bonfire's not bad. Like I could I could actually see using that very strategically. And that might be something that I add later. I would almost take the bonfire over press the digitation. That's tempting. I think, I'll, I think I'll keep it for now. I'll keep it for now. That's fine. Yeah, it's still going to show that, but okay, that's fine. Uh, where was that? In Xanathar's page. 169. There we go. Okay. So, spells are done for a level 1 character. What do we have to do still? What the hell? Oh no, oh. That scared me for a second. That's the companion page. I'm like, why is it all empty? Alright, so all that's done. Where's my dex? 14, so I get a plus 2 bonus. To dex, okay. It's not horrible. Not bad at all. Uh, gear. Let's take a look and see what the wizard gets. Ranger, sorcerer, warlock, the wizard. Uh, 
Uh, proficient with daggers, darts, slings, quarter staffs, light crossbows. Equipment. You start with the following equipment in addition to the equipment granted by your background. Uh, I do need to add background. So, add equipment. Haunted items and gold. Give me the things. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Alright, so I've got that. Background's done. Um, I could pick either a quarter staff or a dagger. A dagger is dex. Quarter staff is probably what? What is? What is? What is? Let's take a look. Uh, here. A. Yeah, too far. No, no, go back. Quarter staff is a strength. He definitely don't want that. Um. So we're gonna be picking a dagger. There we go. I get a component pouch and an arcane focus. Hmm. I don't know how arcane focuses work. And a scholar's pack or an explorer's pack. <coughs> um. I want the scholar pack. Um, what about armor? No armor. Ooh, ooh. Armor. Unarmored. Okay, that brings my armor class to 12. Okay, so the arcane focus. Is that in here? Small block of game recovery. Okay, more protective walls for the activation. I don't know if there's anything special that Arcane Phonus and Component Pouch allow you to ignore the material cost of a spell unless it has consumed or has monetary cost to it. Okay. So. Add equipment. Uh, is it going to be a tool? No. Gear? To the middle. There we go. An arcane focus. Um, I'm going to say that. Got a staff. A rod, an orb, a crystal. We'll go with a staff. And it's a component pouch. Uh, to the middle column. A, B, C, D. Component pouch. There we go. Okay. And then a scholar's pack or an explorer's pack. Just take a look at the difference between those. Five E Scholars Pack. That's fine. And then a five E Explorers Pack. Alright, Explorers Pack, bedroll, backpack. Is it one or the other? Oh, so it is. 
So which one does which? Arcane focus or a component pouch. Do they both do the exact same thing? Doesn't say anything in here. Component pouch is more useful for a multi-class spellcaster. As it will function with every class. Okay, I'll take the component pouch then. Just in case I decide to multi-class. Um, add equipment, gear, middle column, corner pouch. There we go. I'm encumbered already from all this crap. Okay, now what was I looking at? Oh no, don't open Twitch. Okay, Swords Pack, 10 Resurrection, 10 Torches. Go away. Make it. 50 foot of rope. Book of Lore. Backpack, bottle of ink, ink pan, ten sheets of parchment. Little bag of sand, a small knife. Um... Yeah, let me look and see what that haunted one gave me. Crowbar, hammer, wooden stakes, steel, mineral, tinderbox, torch. Okay, so I got torches. Um, this is where all the crap is freaking filling me up on weight. Uh, I think I'm just going to go with the scholars pack. Uh, to the middle column. Scholar's pack. Boo. It's a freaking chest. Look at that. The freaking chest is 25 pounds. All that crap will fit in the backpack. I'm going to sell. A, I'll probably sell that chest like right off the bat. Get rid of it. I just put everything in the backpack that I get from the Explorer's Pack, or the, uh, the other one. Uh, okay, let's add equipment. Oh, it's an ammo. Bloop. There's my dagger. And I don't have any armor and shield. All right, I think we're good there. Oh, how much gold do I start with from Haunted One? Because it didn't give me any gold. Your DM won't let you carry your two chests around. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's 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 kind of crazy. You don't get any gold for your class, do you? 
It's all based off your background. All right. Um. Five E. Haunted one. You'd start with no gold. I am a broke bitch. Nada. Haunted one is from... As from the supplements, it's adventures. Curse of Straw, there it is. Uh, let's just do a shot. Okay. Bloop. Uh, you're hired by something terrible. Is that from the basic book? So that's not in the PHP. All right, let's see here. I can buy a monsters hunter monster hunters pack for 33 gold, which is cheaper than buying the items. A chest, a crowbar, a hammer, three wooden stakes. Oh, I don't have to buy that. I don't have to take that. That's the hunter's pack. I can not take that and add 33 gold back to my character. I think I'll do that. Uh, 44. Uh, let's see here. 5e. Wizard. Starting gold. Oh, you, instead of taking all of this stuff, you can start with that to buy your equipment. But then you have to buy everything individually. That's how that one works. I did that on my bard. Yeah, you can choose to do the 44 times 10 instead of taking this equipment. Sometimes it's just easier to take the equipment. But I can get rid of that pack that I got and give myself 33 gold. So all of this. Um...
Yeah, all that I can just get rid of. Well, actually, it said I had to... Hmm, I don't know if I can give myself a 33 gold from that or not. Um, because this is my starting stuff right here. This is what I start with. So if that's the case, I'm thinking... Let's see, left column was Explorer's Pack, right? The Explorer's Pack. And give me weapons and ammo. How am I at 60 pounds already? Because that is not calculating correctly. There's 10, 15, 22. I got 23 pounds worth of stuff on me, and it's telling me that I'm carrying 60 pounds. Yeah, I know it shows a scholar's pack the first time. I switched it up. Yeah, that's like nine kinds of jacked up. Oh, unless it's telling me. No, because that's what I took. Yeah. I don't have any armor. No, because if I go, I'm pretty sure. Maybe. But maybe that's right. Maybe you're right. So if I say I've got two mess kits, is that going to go up? Yes, you are correct. Okay, so that's 10 pounds. That's 20 pounds. That's 10 pounds. That's 40 pounds right there. 50. Yeah, 60 pounds. Son of a bitch! This guy's not going to be able to carry jack squats. Back of holding. Unless they modify the uh, the encumbrance rules. All right, so that's all done. Equipment's done now. My armor class is populated. Now plus two to initiative. Unarmored. I don't think I can take unarmored defense with. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. That's why you need the party pack newly carry stuff. Yeah, exactly. Unarmored defense. What is that? Oh, it's a variant class feature. Okay. 
While you're not wearing any armor, not wielding a shield, your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier. But that's a variant, and I don't think that'll work for... Yeah. Okay, let's kill some of this stuff. Uh, you, 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 go away. Okay. Seven hit points. God. I'm a squishy. I still need to pick another language. All right, let's go. Oh, uh, let's find us an image. Well, high elf wizard. Oh, God, no. See, I like the red. High elves normally have to look at. Two first level spells? No, not yet. Dragonborn. Gnome. Half elves. Half orc. Tiefling. High Elf. One extra language of your choice. So I can pick any language. Um, Let's go with, what do I have up here? Draconic, Elvish, Common. Um, Why not? Let's go with Dwarvish. Do I get two first level spells at level one? Is that how that works? Under common? Eh. Those are all the feats. Equipment. Backgrounds. Where is the... Yeah, level one, you get two first level spells. So, 
a spell sheet. Um, spell. With an all uh, with a checkbox to show if it's prepared. Wizard spells, first level spells. Do, 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 do. Detect magic can be used as a ritual, a not. <laughs> do I want to do detect magic or identify? Do I want to be able to inspect magical items? Choose one object that you must touch throughout the casting of the spell. If it's a magic item, some or other, you learn its properties and how to use them. Okay, so that would be identify. Yeah, I'll check. I'll take major armor here in just a second. And the other one was, oh, no, I don't want to take magic. Okay, yeah, identify. And you said mage armor. Mage armor. You touch a willing creature who isn't wearing armor and a protective magical force surrounds it until the spell ends. The target's base AC becomes 13 plus its dex modifier. My dex modifier is 2, so that would bring my AC to 15. Instead of 12. You can't identify right now because I can't afford to cast it. Ooh, yeah, a pearl worth at least 100 gold points. Or gold pieces. Shit. Good point. I didn't see the material. Co no! Oh, no, because it, it only works for. It doesn't work on things that require monetary value. Okay. There's no point in that. Spell with a checkbox. Wizard spell. First level. Sky self detect my Oh, that lasts eight hours, too. Wow. Yeah, detect magic is still good. You could detect, like, magical traps and stuff like that, but. Yeah, that wow, that major armor lasts eight hours. That is good. Uh, magic missiles is good. Create three glowing guards of magical force. Each dart deals 1d4 plus 1, so that would be 3d4 plus 1, or 3d4 plus 3. So, magic missiles can do 3d4 plus 3 in one round. What else do I have? Let's take a look. Spell with a checkbox. Wizard spell. First level. Charm cost here. Burning hands. Catapult. 
expeditious retreat. Don't need that because we have shocking grasp. Featherfall. Healing elixir? I don't think that, that, that I don't think that's right. I don't think that's a spell. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, I believe in reproductive rights too, especially for Ice knife, jump, long strider. Missiles. Protection from good and evil is good. Ray of sickness. Hey, you want to my parents next weekend? They remind me so much of my mom. Ray of sickness. Sixty feet. Instantaneous. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. On hit, the target takes 2d8 poison damage and must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, it is also poisoned until the end of your next turn. That wouldn't be bad. That's 2d8. That's pretty... That's a lot at level 1. If you hit with it. 2d8 could be quite a bit of damage. That could, that could definitely be a thing. Sleep is really good, but I think it only lasts for one minute. Sleep. Yeah, duration is one minute. I mean, granted, that's ten rounds if you're in combat, but... Um, yeah. Um, push to spell magic's not there. Snare, sudden awakening, Tasha's hideous laughter. The floating disc wouldn't be bad. Unseen servant, Ooh, witch bolt. Really? Thirty feet. Range spell attack. On hit, the target takes one d twelve lightning damage, and on each of your turns for the duration, you can use your action to deal another one d twelve lightning damage to the target automatically. The spell ends if you use your action to do anything else. Ooh, that hits. The spell also ends if the target is ever outside of the spell's range or if it has total cover from you. That could be good. Yeah, 10 rounds of combat is one minute. I might go with Witch Bolt. So you're gonna be Witch Bolt or the Ray of Sickness? What does the Burning Hands do? That probably requires you to be in melee range.
Hunt on self as you hold your hand with thumbs. Oh, then she's a flame. Shoots forth from your outer sphere. Each creature in a 15 foot cone must make a deck save. The creature takes 3d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. That's not bad. Three D six fire damage on a failed save, or half of that. If I don't make it, so you're guaranteed to at least do half of that damage every time you use it. Whereas the witch bolt, you actually have to hit, so there's a chance to miss. But that's 1d12 versus 3d6. You could technically get more of the 3d6. I think Burning Hands might be a better. But it's only a 15 foot. But it is an AoE. It's a 15 foot cone. So you could hit multiple targets with it. Whereas Witch Bolt is just 30 feet on one target toward a creature. Which bolt might be something I pick up later. I think I'm going to take Burning Hands. I, I, thought, I was thinking that was going to be a, a just a melee thing. That definitely seems better. Which both can be 3d8 each turn for a minute. On hit, the target takes 1d12 lightning damage. Mm -mm. Which which bolt is not a, a d8? Which bolt is a 1d12? And then you can keep using your action on consecutive turns to do the 1d12 damage again. I mean, that's the one thing, is you can cast it one time and you can keep doing it over and over again for up to 10 rounds. Because it's up to one minute. Um, and then it's an additional 1d12 for every... Uh, Spell slot of second level or higher. So each higher spell slot you use adds another d12 to it. Um, being able to continuously cast that with only burning one spell slot. Although you do have to maintain concentration on it. Whereas the burning hands is instant. But it's only a one time use. Oh, it's a toss-up. Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You only have two. So it's a matter of which one do I want to use. Or... <laughs> Do I drop mage armor and take them both? Although I can't really... I don't know. The mage armor is nice. That lasts for eight hours. I think we'll take Witch Bolt. I think I'll get more for my money out of Witch Bolt. Even though it's only on one character. Being able to use it consecutively off of the single cast for multiple rounds. 
As long as I, but if I cast anything else, it breaks Witch Bolt. Or if they go outside of the 30 foot radius. Well, the spell ends if you use your action to do anything else. So I just gotta stay within 30 feet of it. I think I'm okay with this. I mean, I've got I've got some good range of stuff. Shocking grass will get me out of trouble if I'm in melee range with something. Mage armor buffs my AC. Toll the dead has a 60 foot range. Firebolt has a 120 foot range. And then Witch Bolt has a 30 foot range. Yeah, I think I'm good. Uh, concentration can be broken uh, if you get hit. That's the that's the only thing that I was worried about is with a lower AC. But I mean, I guess a a fifteen AC isn't bad. Yeah, you, know, you have to make the Constitution checks to see if you're, you know, sometimes if you get hit real hard, to see if you can maintain your uh, your concentration. But my Constitution, I mean, I've got a. No plus one modifier on constitution. Yeah, exactly. Keep mage armor active. Which, with an eight hour long cycle on it, uh, it should not be hard to keep that up. Um, ooh, wait a minute. Is, is that a concentration spell? But it is. It is not. Sweet. Mage armor is not a concentration spell. It's just a straight eight hours. Sweetness. Uh, I wanted to look up. Yeah, cast and forget exactly. All right. Well, we know. I know what this guy's going to look like. Go. He is going to look like this. See if I get a good picture. That's crappy. Still not great. Give me a good image. That's not bad.
So there's any better ones. No, there's no good pictures. Except this one. There we go. There we go, there's my character. So, gender, male, age, I'm an elf. Um, I think that's what I had before. 5e, e. high elf age. Um, reach adulthood around 100, can live to be 750. So yeah, that'd be about right. Two seventy. That sounds good. All right, height. I'm gonna put him at six foot. Six. Well, we'll do one. I think that'll be good. Weight, all I'm gonna say they're slender, so probably what a buck. Let's see, uh, six foot average weights. Six foot one is from 140 to 190. I'm gonna say 150 because they're supposed to be slender. Wait, it's 150. Uh, this up here. What did I choose? The bonds. No, the ideal is desperation. It says any. So I think I'll be. Chaotic. Don't want to be chaotic. 
Who messages me? Google. Go ahead, Google. Um. One twenty two. Yeah, chaotic good would be good. That would work. Fits the elf. Got it good. Ah, oh, faith hair is brown. Actually, I want his hair to be black. Eyes black. Skin. That's probably like nine kinds of wrong for a high elf. Bronze skin with gonna be have black hair. Oh, no, that works. I'll just change that to bronze. Deities. Let's see if that one is this. Will be the Sun Elves of the Fey Run. <laughs> Here we go, I'll do saloon, I guess. That is the goddess of the moon, knowledge and life, chaotic good. Alright, appearance is that. Uh, the background and stuff I will do later.
All right, so what kind of character did I end up with here? Let's take a look. I'm good. I've got insight investigations. I'm good. Insights. I'm good with religion. I'm really good with investigation. Arcana. Can't lie to save my life. Definitely not athletic. Athletics is the only thing I have a minus one on, though. My charismas are all at straight rolls. Oh, excuse me. Everything else I got a bonus on. My hit dies are 1d6 plus 1. Yeah, 0 modifier is average, right? Yeah, 10 is average. But taking the, the minus 1 in strength here, the only thing it hurts me on is athletics check. That's it. I mean, the straight strength check, but... Everything else, I'm... I think this is going to be a pretty well-rounded character. Now, I don't think... Yeah, I don't get to pick a simple weapon. Oh, goodness gracious. I am proficient with daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. So I could still pick up a light crossbow. Or I can just hang on to my dagger. My dex is at a plus two, so daggers aren't going to be the worst thing. Um, but I really don't want to be in melee range. So. Oh, I need to add my other spells up here to my attacks. What did I pick? Uh, Witch Bolt and Shocking Grasp. Um, there's Shocking Grasp. Oh, I don't need to put Witch Bolt on here, do I? It's, well, it's a straight, what's a 1d12? Why is Witch Bolt done in here? Oh, only cantrips will go in here. Okay, that makes sense. Gotcha. That makes sense. All right, but I got Shocking Grasp in there. Uh, and I can cast that with Intellect. Because of spell casting.
All right. I think this character's done. Minus the backstory, which I'm going to write later. I like it. Um, so for multi-classing, I can dip into anything that uses dex, intelligence, or wisdom. Um, druids use wisdom, I believe. Druid would not be horrible. Um... Yeah, it's normally 13 in a specific. Okay, so apparently it's 13 intellect for... Oh no, that's if you are already a... See, they don't have a wizard guide, damn it. No wizard in the player handbook. Maybe the monk. Fighter, cleric. Druid. Druid is Wisdom 13. There it is. Yeah, I just found the chart. So, I could do that. Let's see. Yeah, because so I got 14 Wisdom. So, I could pick, pick up Druid and pick up some nice healing spells. That wouldn't be bad. Um... Cleric is also 13. Um, Druid, I don't think... Do they have... Armor proficiencies? Yeah, Cleric is uh, Wisdom. 13 Wisdom. Yeah, druids can, can wear medium armor. But would there be any penalty? I, I don't know if there's a penalty for wizards casting in armor. Yeah, but I don't really want heavy armor.
Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any kind of a penalty. Uh, let's see, what else can I get? Intelligence, Dex, and Wisdom. So, that's Cleric, Druid, Monk, Rogue, yeah. Cleric, Druid, Monk, and Rogue. Oh, and Ranger. All those I can dip into. So I'd have to look at the uh, at the difference in spells that the druids and the clerics get, because that's probably where I would go is for some type of a thing. My question though is with spell casting. For the wizard. No, it's only wizard cantrips and spells using intelligence. So my wisdom. I mean, not that it's horrible. I think this is pretty good. I think we've got a pretty solid character. All right, guys. Well, I think I am going to wrap it up for the night. Uh, midnight, I appreciate you, you hanging out and everybody else that's uh, just been kind of lurking and everything else. I appreciate all of you guys. I will definitely be back Wednesday. I don't know if I'll be back tomorrow or not. Uh, but I'll be back Wednesday evening for my actual campaign. I won't be playing this character. Um, I will be playing. Let's uh, let's do this real quick. File save as uh, character sheets. I'll show you the character that uh, I will be playing. This is Hawk, uh, Shenandoah Blackhawk. He is a bard who will be who will be will become a Valor bard at level three. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this guy so far. He's a half elf. He's got he's a a spy. He's got a criminal spy background. Um, he's not as proficient and skills as the wizard is that's kind of funny but yeah that's uh yeah this guy's a lot of fun I might want to double check these to make sure I've got these right. Because that doesn't look. I guess it is. Three, two, three, two zeros, and a minus one. I'll double check it. But yeah, yep. This this is the guy I'm playing. He's a uh, a bard. Is that Valor bard? Yeah, yeah. They, there's a there's a, a thing that gives a bonus to everything. Um. Yeah, rocking uh, dual daggers. He's got uh, he's got dual daggers, right? No, he's only got one dagger. 
Um, he's got hand axes, which unfortunately are strength, which I really wish those were uh, deck space, but they're not. So daggers, he's got the light crossbow. Be using this a lot. Um, mainly building this guy as a, a utility, a utility guy. More of a more of a utility class. Um, my our first uh, session, I made uh, about seventy gold. <laughs> just our first session, just starting off in the starter town. Um, it's kind of comical. So this guy's definitely about the about the, the making the gold. But, all right, guys. Like I said, I appreciate all of you coming, hanging out. Y'all have been absolutely um, amazing. Uh, definitely appreciate y'all coming and showing support after I haven't been here for quite a while. Uh, like I said, I apologize for that. I just, I haven't been feeling it lately. So, uh, so yeah. So that's what, that's where we're at. I mean. Just haven't been feeling it, so I haven't been feeling it. Um, let's see if... Don't run off just yet. Uh, let's go see if there's somebody that we can host. Let's take a look here. Um, there we go. I've got somebody. Alright, guys. I want y'all to go give this guy... A big hello. Um, let him know that I sent you. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Take care. Have a good one.